Um, guten Tag. Ich bin Jenny. And I think that meant, good day, my name is Jenny. <laughs> and that's as much German as, as I know, so please talk to me in English. Um, otherwise, I will look at you very, very quietly. <laughs> um, so hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jenny, and I am a community engineer, which basically is the fact that our website for our company couldn't fit that whole title up there, so we shortened it by removing words. Um, so I'm a community advocate and WordPress engineer. Um, I should also say that I talk quite fast for um, English speakers back at home in Britain, and I only flew into Europe yesterday evening, so I haven't slowed my speech down. Um, so please, since the other room I can't see, the people in this room, you must put your hand up and tell me if I'm going too fast which happens all the time. Sorry. <laughs> it usually takes me about two days to slow down or I'm very tired. So please, if during this talk, you don't understand what I'm saying, put your hand up, don't be shy. We're gonna practice this, put your hands up. I'm talking too fast, obviously. <laughs> See, perfect. Okay, great. So I want to first start off with congratulating you. Woo, Drupal 8. Yay! I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize it was five years in the making. I mean, come on, seriously, five years? <laughs> um, yeah, this will be interesting because five years ago, I went to my first PHP conference. In fact, five years ago um, is when I joined the community. This is how old Drupal 8 is. Five years ago, I wasn't in the community. Um, so yeah, PHP Northwest 2010 was my first open source event. Um, I happened to be interning at the company which ran this event, and it was amazing. It was so amazing that after four weeks there, I thought, this is the job I want for the rest of my life, and I hope I stick with it. <laughs> um, it was amazing because it's where I met people who were willing to give and share knowledge, like they didn't really care that I was about to be a competitor of theirs. And that's something that, to me, was mind-boggling as a student. You're always taught when you're growing up, you're gonna be competing with everybody. Yet, here was a community that just gave away their knowledge for free, and even put it online. In 2011, I actually built the um, PHP Northwest site, and that was actually built on WordPress. And so because of a PHP conference, I became a WordPress developer. Go figure. Um, there is nothing like 400 plus developers going on your website when your site launches and telling you exactly what's wrong with it, especially when you're a student still. That pixel's out of the way. You've got a spelling mistake here which happens all the time. This thing doesn't work. It was actually really cool. When it first happened to me, I was like, oh no, I've done my job wrong. But re slowly I realized it's good. Feedback is good. In 2012, I had graduated. Yay! All that hard work for absolutely a sheet of paper. Um, sorry, I, I forgot we were at university. <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy my university time, I must admit, I did enjoy it, and it was a very good educational course, so please, do consider it. Um, <laughs> but after I graduated, I took a job, and at this job, I got given a uh, project which was about a um, plugin in the WordPress community called BuddyPress. Now, BuddyPress, oh, some people moan there, maybe they know what it is. <laughs> um, so BuddyPress was, is this plugin which makes WordPress into kind of a, like a, a membership and like a group thing. Um, and the version of BuddyPress I was using wasn't the easiest one to use. But luckily, I found somebody online who was happy to help me do this project and gave me lots of hints and I could ask questions. And I found out that not only did this person live in the UK, which is fantastic, because that's where I live, um, but also they were going to this 
event, WordCamp Edinburgh. I hadn't realized, even though I'd been in the PHP community for two years, that WordCamps and WordPress had their own events. And so after being so much in debt and being gratified by the amount of help I got, I went to Edinburgh from Manchester. I mean, you don't really need an excuse to go to Edinburgh, but I went to Edinburgh and thanked the person in person, like real life thing, and bought him a pint, which was nice. Um, there's nothing like saying thank you. It was great. Life kept going until last year when I uprooted and traveled all the way from Manchester, 200 miles down south to a place called Reading, which is really boring. Um, <laughs> yeah. If anyone's been to Reading, they know what I mean. Um, that's about 300 kilometers, which in European terms is like nothing. In UK terms, it's like half the world. Um, and what it really meant was that I went from a city which has more meetups than days in the month to a city that has no local user groups at the time. So as a tech person who went to PHP Northwest meetings, then went to the WordPress meetings, and then went to the front end meetings, all of a sudden to go to a town that had nothing was devastating. And what this taught me was that I'm a community addict, really. I just love going to community things. I love going to learn. I love meeting people, sharing our passion about web technologies, trying to find that right solution and helping people to work out what solution works for them. In fact, I loved it so much that I ended up becoming a PHP Northwest organizer, and that was really cool. It meant that I got to choose which speakers got accepted or not. I mean, it wasn't just me, there was other people as well, but I got to be a part of the community and be involved in it. In 2014, because I left Manchester, and because it was so far away, I stepped down from this organizational role, and it was probably one of the hardest things I've had to do leaving a family, a community that I loved and cherished so much. And I was like, okay, that's fine. From before this, PHP Northwest hasn't had many WordPress developers, WordPress engineers at its event. So I gave, made the opportunity, seeing it being my last event, to invite as many of the WordPress community to come to this event I gave the WordPress community members that I was talking to a promise. A promise that going to this PHP event meant that they had my guarantee as an organizer that they were going to have a good time. So when there was a talk on stage, in fact, it was one of the keynotes, and the person on stage mentions WordPress, and the whole room laughs, laughs at WordPress, which, to be fair, there are bad parts of WordPress. I won't, admit, I won't deny it. I tweeted this out. When I asked WordPress developers why they don't go to PHP conferences, they said to me they were scared they would be laughed at. PHP Northwest, my conference, just proved them right. I was angry, like really angry. <laughs> And it got me thinking. A few months later, I did another very unscientific survey on Twitter. How do you, as a non-WordPress community, perceive the WordPress community? And what you expect from this is some good and some bad. Like, that's good, and that's bad. That's really bad. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, but this is where I would start swearing. Really bad. And I think this response on Twitter sums it up perfectly. Wow, pretty sad response. Yep, it's not, it's not great. 
I came up and I started ranting about this, started getting angry about it, because the reality of it was that the mocking of WordPress by other communities is like watching my parents have a fight every day. It's not something we like to watch, but we have to watch it anyway because we're at home. And WordPress is no better. We see these fights daily on Twitter over which CMS or project is better for a particular solution. And these arguments and discussions get heated. In fact, I would go as far as to say the mocking of any technology by anybody is like watching my parents have a fight every day. No one wins. Everyone just leaves with a broken heart. That got me thinking, what is community? We're at a Drupal camp. Mostly, what I've learned from asking people that I know in the Drupal community about the Drupal community is that your community is mainly full of developers. But I'm sure in this room that we have also business owners, designers, users, clients, content writers, journalists, maybe less so here, but you definitely get them in other communities, other tech communities. You might have some shop owners in here that have built their sites on Drupal and are tech savvy enough to run their own Drupal site. You'll definitely have project managers here, even if they don't want to admit that they're project managers. And you might have a bunch of scientists in the room. Who knows? And so on and so forth. The reality of it is, communities are built on people. We're a community of people. For me, community is like a pick and mix. The sweets. We all have different job roles. We all do different things. But ultimately, we're still sweets. And in our communities, we're that bag. The community and the people all have one thing in common, whether that is WordPress, Drupal, PHP, name your poison. It's a community that has something in common with each other. We're also part of another community. For example, I'm WordPress and PHP. I'm also front end. I'm also now part of the community advocate group. How often do you go to another community group. I've seen a few faces here today, which I recognize from my travels in the PHP community and the WordPress community, and that's super cool. But how many of you have been to an event that isn't a Drupal event? This year, I went to Django EU. Django EU is a European conference for the Django CMS built on Python. Now let's face it, I know next to no Python, if any at all. I also went to Drupal Camp London this year, my first Drupal Camp. I just rocked up, wanted to see what all the fuss was about. Um, and this was after many years of the Drupal community in Manchester saying, oh, you should go to the one in Manchester. And it was just always bad timing, so I never managed to make it there. Now the difference between these two communities is starking. At Django EU, they were the most welcoming group that I have met this whole entire year. And if you know anything about my traveling arrangements, that's a lot of conferences I'm comparing it to. They even had a Python for PHP developers workshop, which meant every PHP developer who was actually there got to learn a little bit of Python and understand how it worked, which was really cool. They opened their arms and they didn't judge. In fact, if you go to the website, you'll see so much of their site is built around diversity and accessibility, regardless of anything and everything. On the other hand, when I went to Drupal Count London and I told people that I was a WordPress engineer, I got this kind of weird, silent look, which was like, are you in the right place? which is absolutely fine, I understand. But the reality of it is, is that, yes, I'm in the right place because I chose to be there. Let me just get this straight. I'm at a Drupal camp. Yes, I'm a WordPress developer. And 
that is absolutely acceptable. Let me just get this right. I know I'm a developer, and that means my echo chamber and the things I read and the things I listen to are going to be from developers majority. Um, and it also means that my way of thinking is going to be kind of developer -y, which I guess in this kind of work camp where most people are developers, a work camp, sorry, Drupal camp, <laughs> is absolutely cool. But we need to listen outside this echo chamber. You have to make an effort to look outside your own echo chambers. And this is something that is not easy at first, but becomes easier over time. I can only speak for myself as a WordPress PHP community member. Um, but I did a particular unscientific survey. I'm sure you've noticed I like unscientific surveys. Asking the WordPress community how they found other outside communities. And regarding the PHP community in general, I got a mixed set of results. Now, I realized that we're at a Drupal camp, so these comments are going to mention WordPress, but I want you to replace the word WordPress with the word Drupal and see how many of these comments you can relate to. I generally have a good experience interacting online with authors. That's a pretty good response. I wasn't really expecting responses like that, but it's good to know that some people have a good, good interaction. But actually, more commonly, the responses looks like this. I only consider the WordPress community never interact with the whole PHP community. That sounds like somebody who's never stepped outside their front yard. Not much regular interaction, but I'm tired of reading blog posts that, and articles that um, degenerate WordPress. Is that a word? Yeah. And when I asked a bunch of WordPress core team members to submit a talk at a PHP conference, this was the response I got. I'm too scared to go. They, the PHP developers, will mock me for being a WordPress developer. This is a core member of our team. Someone who goes into the WordPress community and shouts HHVM and Nginx and PHP 7, yet they weren't comfortable going to a PHP conference, or at least just submitting a talk. That's more sad faces. That's not cool. The Drupal community, hats off to them, has led the charge on bridging communities. There is no doubt about this. The Getting Off the Island initiative is one of the biggest things I talk about in the WordPress community. In fact, I'm sure they're sick of me by now, which is probably why I'm at a Drupal camp now. <laughs> this was the coolest thing I ever found out about the Drupal community, and hats off to you all. Also, the GoPHP5 initiative. That was Drupal community. You took the charge as a community and brought the whole PHP community together to drop PHP 4. Now, that was before my time, but thank you for doing it. And you have, like today, opened your doors, invited people from outside the community in, which is great. And this is all great. This is all great strides in the right direction. But there is more to be done. If we all choose to keep on improving our tiny corner of the community, that tiny bit more, 0.1%, tiny bit more, what difference could we make together as a whole? 400 people? That's a lot of effort. This is one of my favorite sayings. Multi-dimensional problems need multi-dimensional solutions. There isn't a silver bullet to bridging communities. It isn't that we can just do one thing and it's all done. We have to keep going. So let's look at some possible solutions. And these are some of my ideas and some ideas that other people have given to me. So events. 
You've got Drupal camps, word camps, conferences. Go to some conferences that aren't Drupal camps, please. Feel free to go to your local word camp. In fact, word on the street is that there's not that many tickets to word camp Europe, which is happening in Vienna, your hometown. So you have no excuse. Go to Symphony Conf, go to Symphony Live events. I mean, you're using lots and lots of modules from Symphony now. You have no excuse. Also go to database conferences, JavaScript conferences, conferences, design conferences. I know other conferences tend to be much more expensive than Drupal camps. We get it. The work camp world is the same. 20 euro tickets, 30 euro tickets, and then you go to a PHP conference and it's 200 euros, 300 euros. I understand it's quite a big jump in price. But what about going to one outside event, one outside a Drupal event every two years? Cut that cost down and go to different ones. It is definitely worth attending it. There's also user groups and meetups. And most of the time, those are free. Now, unfortunately, oh, I don't think that was my cup. <laughs> unfortunately, I can't um, click and pull at the same time. I need a third hand. But there you go. All these communities have their own ecosystem. Go and be a visitor. Go and be a guest just for one day. Let's also talk about dates. Now, it might be better in the Drupal community, but in the WordPress community, we're pretty bad at this. Be considerate of what dates other events are on. Try and make sure your local events aren't at the same time. And this isn't just about your conferences, but also about your user groups. It was great in Manchester because we had a calendar and all the user group organizers talked to each other. It meant that if you wanted to go to a meetup every evening, then you could go to a meetup every evening and no one would stop you. You could learn all the things and not have to pick between PHP or Drupal. There's an open source project. Granted, it needs a lot of love, but there's a whole bunch of developers here, right? Called Open Tech Calendar. Google it. Also run some joint events. Drupal Austria did this last January, where security team members from the WordPress, Typo3, and Drupal community talked about their work. That's really cool. It was a huge success, and that's no surprising, considering security is security. It doesn't really matter what you join up with. You can join up with a local writing community who use online mediums. You could join with your local PHP user group. They're both really good ideas because ultimately you're either going to talk to your users or talk to other developers. And if you are looking for your local PHP user group, there's an amazing site which everyone here should know about called php.ug. If you don't know about it, get that in your bookmark. It shows every single PHP user group in the world, which means when you're traveling, you can go and see if there's a local PHP user group nearby as well. Constantly being updated as well. If you have a user group that you know about, please add it on there. In Manchester, I was talking to a person called Mike Bell. Um, He's a local Drupal person in Manchester, and he was complaining to me about how whenever he put on these Drupal sprint days just as a user group, they would never get anybody new going to the actual sprint day. They couldn't get new sprinters for the Drupal community in Manchester. 
And I was on the other side saying, well, in the WordPress community, we seem to always get new people, but we don't have people stick. And then also, it was really annoying because the cost of renting a space and the food and catering, it was just so much overhead for a one-day event. So we joined together, and the Dreamwire community turned up as well and had an open sprint day where we just rented a space out together, got a bunch of food in, and went, hey, what do you want to do? It meant that the buzz in the room that day was magical. Loads of people typing away, just like egging you on to get that thing fixed. It was super cool. Do an open sprint day. Invite other communities to come together and put on an open sprint day. Let me also point out to you that camps are not conferences. Mix this up. There is nothing in the book that says camps have to be a certain way. Go outside. Go outside this community and go to other people's user groups. Invite outside communities to your events to speak. Bring back some of that knowledge that you find when you're out there. Build stuff with things that you've never touched before. Build something with WordPress. And share your knowledge. Share your experience of what happened when you built it with a different system. Was it better? Was it worse? Was it the same? How many people here are at their first Drupal camp? It's a fair number of you. Welcome to everyone who decides to go to their first Drupal camp. To the people who have been here before, make sure these people feel welcomed. Invite everyone to the party. Don't give them that, are you sure you're in the right place look. It was, when I got this at Drupal Camp London, I just felt so out of place, like I shouldn't be there. But that isn't the feeling you should be giving to these new people. You should be giving them a warm embrace so they want to come back and they'll bring their friends with them. Show the world what an open invite in the Drupal community looks like. Introduce everybody to everybody else. Don't go assuming people know each other unless you're sure they do. This is one of the easiest things you can do as an attendee to make this event a thousand times better for those new people here. And make the first step. I know there is a stereotype, especially for developers, where we don't like talking to each other. But someone has to make that first step. So it might as well be you. As a community, you should also give out recognition. Recognize for all contributions, not just code. In the WordPress community, we have profiles in WordPress.org. And you can see I have two badges, one which is for speaking, and the other one is for community. I'm part of the community team. I don't work on the core team. This shows that all teams, regardless of where you're working in the WordPress ecosystem, gets recognized. And this is super cool. Words are one of the most powerful tools we have. Let's think about the words we choose to use and when we use them with each other. We're able to choose our words, but not able to choose how it will affect other people. So be careful when you're talking to each other. Embrace diversity. If you're serious about wanting to improve diversity in the tech industry, and it's totally up to you as a community, then diversity has to be part of the plan, not an afterthought. And I'm talking about diversity of technology as well as people. Diversity of tool choices, because let's face it, everyone has their favorite IDE. Diversity of o OS choices as well. 
We have to respect all choices regardless of what they are. And diversity of swag. Now I heard some of you were sniggering just now. But when I go to an event that doesn't have slim fit t-shirts, then I'm part of the afterthought. In fact, I've had people tell me they feel like a second class citizen because the stuff and swag that is given out at that event doesn't suit them. They can't use it. It's not like they've noticed there are other people in the room. So when it comes to swag and diversity of swag, do it right or don't bother at all. It's quite simple. Save the money and have a better conference. People here want to learn. Everyone in this room knows something more than someone else and something less than someone else. And you have to remember this. In the next two days, you're going to meet lots and lots of speakers. They are sharing their knowledge and their experience. That's all speaking is, really. Just sharing your experience. And the great thing about experiences is that no one can tell you it's wrong. So if you thought about speaking at your local user group or at your local Drupal camp, then do it. It's not that scary. You have a mentoring team. I so wish the WordPress community had this, like lots. Join them, help them, tell people about them. And if you don't want the Drupal one, then there's also a PHP one. And if you want to learn something, you have to speak up. One of the best things I ever did when I first joined the community was ask, can somebody explain to me OOP? Ask at your local user group topics that you want to know about. That way they can find people to share that knowledge. Make sure you ask questions. Over the next two days, you will see lots and lots of talks. There is no way you do not have a question to ask. There is no way speakers are going to know exactly what you want to know. So make sure you put your hand up and ask that question that you're burning to ask. No question is too stupid. And I mean no question. So many times when I go to conferences, people say, I've got a question, but um, it's a stupid one. No, it's not stupid. Your attitude over the next two days and over the next following months will dictate how other people who are here today feel about your community. You're going to make that mark on them. So make sure you welcome them, you don't belittle them, you leave that door open so they want to come back to Vienna next year. You educate them about Drupal and its community and its love for all things, what's this thing called? Drupacon, that's it, thank you. You support these new people in the room and you mentor them through the day and through the next few days. Be cheerleaders, be the people that you want this community to be. When was the last time you said, that's cool, that's great, and supported each other? And be respectful when you're having discussions. You can have a discussion without fighting. Be empathetic and guide people. Guide people to the open source community, to any open source community. And if you're doing this already, then that's amazing. Please get up, share your experiences, and tell people what you liked and what you didn't like. We all have flaws, and we all have flaws in our communities. Together, we can work this out. I just want to finish with a few reminders. Bridges are not built overnight. The Drupal community did start this, and it's amazing to see how far it's gone. But bridges also need maintenance. 
It's up to us, every single one of us individually, to make sure we keep that bridge maintained, keep that door open. We can improve the bridging of communities, the fluctuation between different communities, one step at a time. Multidimensional problems need multidimensional solutions. So I ask you today, what solution do you have? Thank you, All right, um, thank you so much, Jenny. Um, I would like to have a question. Sure. So in Austria, a couple of years ago, we did the Drupal Roadshow where we visited different places because we felt like, well, Drupal in Austria is kind of Vienna specific. All the events are organized by the Viennese community. And then we traveled around and we made presentations. And um, now we're kind of hoping to see the grassroots movements from other regions spark up. Um, what would be your suggestion to, to see that happen? Um, when people ask me this question in the WordPress community, I always tell them size doesn't matter. So as far as we're concerned, a group of people can be two people at a pub. I mean, I'm British, so all our things happen in a pub. Um, so two people at a pub talking about Drupal, that's a meetup. Two people at a pub complaining about Drupal and how painful their clients are is also a meetup. For me, user groups are basically free therapy sessions about how painful your life and job is right now. Um, and that's really how I tell people, you don't need to worry about getting 20 people to your local user group. If you have two people figuring it out together, then that's a user group. A third person might turn up later on. Um, and really, you have to keep it consistent. So if you are starting a grassroots event, try and keep it on the same day and time, like per calendar month, and also the same location. Because what you want to do is build up a memory in people's minds on the third Wednesday of the month at half six, Manchester WordPress user group will meet up. Or the second, no, the first Wednesday of the month at half six at Mad Lab, I bet you Drupal Group Northwest will be meeting up. And I know this because it's consistent. And that means that when I go to other events, I know there's a consistency. I can tell people about it. So consistency is the key. You also don't need speakers. Let me just point this out. You don't need speakers. You can just get together and complain together. It's absolutely fine. Are there questions from the audience? Just a second. Sure. Does anyone know what this weird box going around in circles <laughs> is? <laughs> uh, for anyone in the other room, it's a 360 degree picture thingy that goes around and takes um, thingies. <laughs> yep, question. So thank you very much for your talk. I've been to like quite a lot of PHP conferences, and this has literally been the first talk of, of the WordPress community that I've seen. So thank you very much for that. Um, one thing that I'm wondering about, you were speaking about um, embracing WordPress and embracing the WordPress community and developers in other events. Um, I, like what I've seen, or if you follow PHP development in the last five years maybe, then you've seen that all of these communities have moved together and are really creating one big PHP community, mm -hmm. especially with Drupal, accepting the Symfony com components, sure. stuff like that, Fig, all these things are happening and WordPress kind of doesn't take part in any of those yeah, things. Yeah, so I know. So I think the reason or the fact that WordPress developers are kind of absent at any like online or offline PHP event also makes it hard to embrace them because it's kind of an unknown species, right? You don't know them. You, you've never met one. You well, last time I checked, I still have two eyes. I still have hair and a head. Um, no, I, I, your, your point is totally valid. So I actually gave this talk at WordCamp Europe last year, and I talked about it a lot at our um, community summit in 2014 in San Francisco, where 
like there's lots and lots of people who it's basically the community summit is um when like the particular people in the community get together across from across the world we get in a room and then we thrash out any issues that we have and deal with things then and there just because it's easier in person and I mentioned we need to bridge this gap we need to talk about it more so in the WordPress community they have been doing this we are seeing more WordPress developers submitting to PHP conferences um, what I find really hard is for example I was at PHP uh, PHP world last week in um, DC and um, one of the WordPress talks had two people attend. This is one of the hardest things for us to currently deal with when we submit to PHP conferences and only two people attend. And actually we know those two people who don't need this talk. It's really, it's really heartbreaking. Um, so if you do go to a PHP conference and you know, you're not really super keen on another talk, do go to a WordPress talk and to see what kind of things we do. When it comes to WordPress and the fig and the fact that we still have 5.2 support that I don't want to talk about, um, it's all because of the WordPress mentality. We have a number one rule, which is users first. Our users don't care what version of PHP they are on. And we are dropping it. But it takes time. There are certain constraints that we have when you're running 25% of the internet. You can't just break things for 25% of the internet. And so, don't get me wrong. Yes, the FIG is happening. Yes, the WordPress community isn't officially part of FIG. That doesn't mean that the WordPress community doesn't have their finger on the pulse when it comes to FIG or PHP 7. We're PHP 7 ready. We just don't talk about it because that's kind of how we are. Um, and when we have talked about it, people don't really respond. So if you do see us talk about the fact that we are PHP 7 ready, please help us celebrate that the same way we're helping the Drupal community to celebrate the fact that after five years, we finally landed Drupal 8. Cool, thanks. Look, that's ex exactly what we were hoping for. We have Symfony developers talking to WordPress people at the Drupal camp. Is <laughs> Is there, we can take one more question. That's your chance. Yes, can you pass it on? I was wondering, uh, for the new people who are coming, do you think uh, organizers should try to do some funny stuff, you know, like to, to incorporate them into the community? Like, I remember it was hard for me to be somewhere for the first time and not knowing anyone. and. Sure, so the question is um, whether organizers should do something to help new people integrate into the community. This is really up to the size of the event. Um, when you have a 400 people event, trying to do a networking event for 400 people is next to impossible. Um, but say you have a Drupal camp which is 200 to 100 people, then actually it's easier to do a networking event. So some work camps do do networking events as a session that is compulsory to everyone, and it works out really, really well. They have questions on a um, sheet of paper that you go around and pass them around and ask questions. But organizers do a lot already. So I don't think it should be the organizers who do facilitate this. Attendees in this room at an event are just as important to a conference and to an event like Drupal Camp Vienna as the organizers are. The organizers are here to facilitate the fact that all of you are together in one location having fun. Now it's up to the attendees to actually have fun. So I really would take it upon the attendees to make that leap and that and that arm, reach, reach out to those new people and make sure you meet at least five new people over the next few days. I like to defend organizers because the reality of it is most of these people who are organizing Drupal camps are probably spending nine months of their year with two full-time jobs. So that's part of my reason why I'd rather see attendees do more work. Cool. Thanks a lot again, Jenny. Thank you. So that concludes the first keynote.